Oh my God. I thought we will get through this without any errors, but we have errors. So let's see how to uh, deal with this. We are in part four. And if there is anything that the software engineers love, it's deploying often. Though we can add a ton of features to what we have, what we have is pretty much good. And it is important that we expose it to the outside world and get some feedback. And that's exactly what we are doing in video four. We are going to deploy it. And deploying a versal application is as smooth as it can get. So let's get started. So what do we have? We have the app running in my local, which is here. I should change the title. Uh, and we have the app push to this GitHub repository. You can also access the code here. And there are branches for different videos that we did so far. And here's where I will deploy it. And deploying to Wurzel is super easy. So we're going to click on the deploy button and we're going to continue with GitHub. Wurzel will request access to access your GitHub account and you provide that access. And once you give it access, um, you have to pass the repository name, which is just duplicates in my case. Um, I'm not going to create a repository. Rather, I have to fetch a repository that's already there. So hmm, let's see. Yeah, import a different Git repository, duplicates. So we looked up the due duplicates repository and we gave uh, GitHub permissions to it. Now we will import this repository. The project name is duplicates and it's an XJS application. The root directory is everything. I'm just going to keep it like that and then press deploy. This will take some time and the deployment process usually has this building state where the code is get code gets compiled into JavaScript and Followed by that, you will have it deployed somewhere. So all of that happens. It takes some time. We cut and then see the deployment happening. Oh my God. I thought we will get through this without any errors, but we have errors. So let's see how to uh, deal with this. So uh, good practice. Right now, what I did is I just developed the application and then just pushed it to Versil. And Versil is spitting out all these errors for me. Instead of that, if you want to reproduce that locally, I'm using my 0.3 version and I'm running a build on top of it. This is also going to take some time. It's going to do the same build that we saw there. Uh, so we can reproduce the same error locally so that um, we can work on it. We can fix it locally and then make a push. Right? Um, type set of string can only be iterated through when using the down level iteration flag or with a target of hmm. so let's see what this is i have no clue what this is hmm. like i've already gone through this for some reason i don't know the problem is um our compiler options will be somewhere in here it's es5 let's move to es2015 and see if that fixes us for that do you want to use Available in pain, and I change it to 2015. If you share still facing the error after changing the target, then change the cache. So the cache is the culprit here. So let's remove it and then we can do the front build and see if it fixes it. Yeah, looks like that fixes it. So let's go back to Versil and attempt our build again. So we have it this failed, so we have to re-trigger it. So as a result of our default setup. When you push new code, it gets rebuilt again. So that took about 37 seconds and the deployment also happens. Let's go visit our application that is being deployed and we have to get everything right. Hmm, authenticating and all that fancy. So that's our application live in a remote URL. What we can also do is we can assign a domain name, which I'm going to definitely do. Uh, here is assigning custom domain names. We're going to do that right now. So let's go back to project is here. Let's give it a domain name. So here is a domain name and the domain name that I want to do give is in godaddy delete duplicates.com. So what you have to do is you have to go to your domain provider and then you have to add these records for it to redirect here. So let's do that. I'm going to go to godaddy and meet you there. So here's my DNS record for duplicates.com. Let's go grab uh, everything from the other setup and then put it here. So A record, we have to map it to this one or name server. Uh, we don't want the name server. We're going to just redirect from there. For this, we are going to edit the A record and then change the value to this and then save it. Similarly, what we are going to do is we're going to do the C name, www. Is there a C name and then www value is C 
cname.versal.com and then save. So that should, okay, now let's refresh. This might take some time uh, for it to happen, but see, you can already see it. Okay, we have given it enough time. Not Now what we can do is www.tduplicates.com. So the app is up and running. Uh, one thing that's really bothering me is this create next app that is still there. Let's go and change that and then push it to me. Uh, next app, this layout.tduplicates is, is where it's coming from. So let's change this to duplicates, the description to duplicates from your next file. And that's my, this one. So let's add this, submit this, change title and description. And did you see that we haven't done, created a new uh, branch or anything for the deployment? It just takes the main, deploys it. Now that we have pushed it, if you go back to deduplicates and look at deployments, you will see it already building. So this is what you called as automatic deployment or continuous deployment, right? Every time you push a change, the change is detected and you get a new deployment. And this is great for your local development. When you're doing it for production, you will create feature branches. Um, and then from the feature branch, you will create a deployment. Also, I have noticed that it's creating a separate build for each branch. So if you're working on a different branch, you can visualize the change that's happening on that particular branch. So there are multiple settings around this. So this is ready. Now let's see if we refresh this and that works or not. Yes, it works. So now our application has a proper title and it's deployed. From here, we will see how to do a proper backend for this uh, rather with Next.js or something else that is still up to me. I want to share something interesting at the end of this because I was preserving this for the end. Since I'm a very hardcore Pythonista, I want to show you this fast UI that came across recently. So this is from Pydantic and they have introduced this uh, framework where you can build a front end with Python. So this is something very interesting. But what I thought is, how about I will do deduplicates again, but with fast, fast UI and use fast API as a backend. So these are some of the thoughts that I have running in my mind. Okay. It's open for you so you can tell me what you want to pair program with me next time i'll then see you bye bye